My name is Lacey Green and you're watching D News. Despite the fact that homosexuality is observed in over 1500 different species in the animal kingdom, there is still a debate amongst the homo sapiens about whether or not homosexuality is natural. People who think that homosexuality isn't natural think of it as a choice or a lifestyle, that the natural preference is for the opposite sex. Others say that it's not a choice, it's an inherent preference for the same sex, that just like straight people don't choose who they're attracted to, neither do gay people. Science has dug its way into this hot debate, owing to a few popular studies conducted in the past 20 years, the leading thought is that homosexuality is genetic, it's something you inherit. Although pinpointing a specific gene has been very tricky business. Evolutionarily speaking, gay and lesbian folks are less likely to have children, so how then is it possible for a gene to be passed on to 8% of the population? A new study that came out recently claims to have an answer to this question, epigenetics. Epigenetics refers to a change in how a gene is expressed. The expression is changed not by a change in the DNA sequence, but by other mechanisms, in this case, changing exposure to testosterone in the womb. So to understand this, we ought to back up a little bit. In biology class, you learned that an XX chromosome means that the baby will become a female, and an XY chromosome will develop into a male. But why does XY become a male? Well, because genes on the Y chromosome trigger the release of testosterone, which prompts the development of other male characteristics. Now, during this process, the hormone release is regulated by epimarks, or sex-related genes that are turned on and off to keep male or female development on a steady course even when hormones are spiking and dipping and all kinds of crazy pregnancy things are happening. This regulation process called epichanges controls how masculine or feminine a fetus is. Now normally epichanges are erased after they're activated. They aren't supposed to be passed on from a parent to a child because they're triggered by the environment. But occasionally they do pass. And when that child has children of their own, the idea is that child could be gay. Kind of confusing, I know, but basically it's about hormone exposure in the womb that affects sexual preferences in offspring a generation down the line. Now, the study is not conclusive, but it is scientifically significant. We're slowly advancing our understanding of homosexuality, a great evolutionary question. It's also socially significant, because one of the main arguments used to justify discrimination against LGBT folks is that they're choosing to be gay, that this is a bad choice, so they deserve to be punished with discriminatory policies. But as this research unravels, we're starting to see that sexual orientation may not actually be a lifestyle choice, that it very well could be an immutable characteristic, something that you can't change, just like your race or your sex. And since we now legally acknowledge that racism and sexism are kinda not okay, maybe society at large can extend that attitude to homophobia as well. In that sense, research like this moves us forward toward a more tolerant and peaceful world. And personally, I kind of get down with that. So guys, let me know what your thoughts are about this development, and hey, make sure you subscribe so that you can get some more D-News tomorrow.